Good evening, Golden, and welcome to another COVID-19 live briefing. I am Mayor Laura Weinberg, and with me is City Manager Jason Slowinski. Uh, we will give some comments and updates first, and then we will open it up for questions and answers. So make sure uh, you get your questions in so we can address them tonight. Um, I would like to first acknowledge that I know that COVID fatigue is happening. Uh, people are tired of thinking about it, tired of talking about it, and tired of changing behaviors to address it. However, we are here again tonight because it hasn't gone away, and we are still actively working to suppress the spread of the virus so that we can keep our businesses and our amenities open. I want to also thank all community members for reaching out, uh, contacting me, contacting uh, city council, I'm sure also contacting the city manager directly um, about your concerns and uh, your questions. And I just want to say I apologize for not being able to respond directly to each and every one of you. I do appreciate uh, you taking the time to send your concerns. Uh, things continue to change rapidly, though, and we have many updates to share with you tonight. City Council met last night for a lengthy discussion about suppressing the virus. Uh, the two main topics were access to Clear Creek for recreation and wearing face coverings when in public in Golden. There was a lot to consider and many ideas brought forward by councillors. It takes a majority of council to provide direction, so at least four members gave approval to move forward with certain actions. I will do my best to summarize recent decisions and the actions uh, from last night, and if I make any mistakes or omissions, I'm sure the city manager will help to set me straight. The first topic is Clear Creek. Uh, Clear Creek access, uh, which means any access to the water for any purpose is closed from all city land. That was the decision last night regarding Clear Creek. It will remain closed, the access will remain closed, at least until council discusses the status at our next meeting on July 9th. The, um, the, Next piece on the Creek Corridor uh, was a request to city staff uh, to produce a plan to modify the corridor to reduce crowding along the creek. Um, ideas on reducing crowding, any funding requirements, and timeframes needed uh, will be presented to council also at our next meeting on July 9th. A third action that council directed uh, was to send a letter to Governor Polis asking for the ability to have local control to regulate the use of the creek during this public health emergency. Right now, only the state can control use in the creek. And because of the emergency and the public health concerns that we are under, council would like to have that ability to address the use within our city. So we will draft and send a letter to the governor asking for that ability uh, during this current crisis. The second topic that council made some decisions uh, last night is around face coverings in the city. And for any of the background on either of these topics or that discussion, our council meeting is available online. I didn't want to take all the time to recreate everything, so I'm just giving you the outcomes here. But please do uh, listen to that meeting, watch that meeting for additional details on the discussion. Regarding face coverings, uh, council had previously passed a resolution supporting the requirement of face coverings inside of businesses and in city buildings. Last night, council asked the city manager to enact face covering requirements in city-owned public spaces, such as parks and trails, and I'm sure the city manager will share the details on that. Uh, the other 
piece on face coverings is that City Council will be having a special meeting next Wednesday, July 8th, to consider on first reading an emergency ordinance requiring face coverings in all public spaces. If passed on first reading, City Council will consider and, and vote to adopt the emergency ordinance for face coverings at our July 9th meeting. So that is our next, uh, we will have a meeting on the 8th for first reading specific to an emergency ordinance on face coverings. And then on the July 9th meeting, we will have vote to adoption on that, as well as the discussion on the creek access and potential reopening. All of this is coming about, uh, and the reason why we had the special meeting last night is because we are seeing more people in Golden. Uh, the state is also seeing an increase in the number of cases, which led to the governor announcing yesterday an order closing bars and nightclubs again. Uh, further spread of the virus could lead to further closures. And council believes these measures regarding the creek and face coverings are necessary to protect the public health of our community and reduce the spread of the virus so that we don't have to see additional closures uh, to businesses that have just recently been able to reopen. I must stress that the rules apply to everyone and not just certain groups. A creek access closure isn't just for tubing and swimming. It also means that if you want to take a walk with your dog by the creek during this closure time, the trail will still be open. You can go for your walk, but you are not allowed to go down by the water during your walk. Fishing and kayaking had been allowed during the previous high water closure, and that closure was for public safety because the flows were dangerous. But that activity is not allowed with a full creek access closure. We will be working to reopen the creek as soon as possible, since it isn't the activity in the creek that is the concern for spreading the virus, but rather the crowding along the creek side where maintaining distancing is difficult to achieve. I also wanna share just a little background and additional information about face coverings. Back in early May when council first discussed a resolution supporting the requirement of face coverings, we also agreed to send a letter to Dr. Johnson of Jefferson County Public Health asking that a countywide face covering requirement be put in place. Employees were and still are already required by state orders to wear face coverings, but the state orders do not apply to customers. At that time, the county declined to put an order requiring face coverings in place, stating that reports of compliance were showing that 70 to 90% of customers were adhering to the rules for wearing coverings and also that there was no ability for the county to enforce such a requirement. In a meeting this morning uh, with the Board of County Commissioners and Dr. Johnson from Jefferson County Public Health, I expressed Golden's concerns about compliance going down and more people traveling and leaving home during these summer months. I asked again if the county will be considering a countywide requ requirement for face coverings the response this morning was that if data continues to show an increase in the number of cases, then a countywide requirement may be considered. So that's where we stand at the moment. Uh, that's the latest information that, that I have to share um, on our actions last night, as well as some continuing work today. Um, for more details on the actions that, we, that council requested of the city manager and staff and other updates from the city, I am going to turn things over to our city manager, Jason Slowinski. Thank you very much, Mayor, I appreciate it. Uh, good evening, Golden, hope everyone's well and, uh, and doing well um, as we continue to, to face the, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and, and, and do our best to, to manage the impacts that it has here locally uh, in the city of Golden. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, uh, last night council had asked to um, 
uh, that we issue uh, administrative orders related to creek access and uh, face coverings on public property. So we've done that. Uh, th they both will be effective uh, starting tomorrow, uh, July 2nd. <clears throat> the uh, access to Clear Creek, um, we've already started, uh, city staff has already started uh, putting that into place um, based on some of the resources we have uh, today and, and tomorrow. Uh, so we've been working on uh, already putting up fencing along uh, along Clear Creek to close off access points to the water. And um, we will put additional signage up uh, in the next couple of days. And also uh, signage related to uh, the face mask uh, or face covering requirements uh, on public property. The uh, face covering requirement applies to, to anyone on, on public property at City of Golden owned public property and buildings. So this includes our parks. Uh, includes our trails on city-owned land. It includes our uh, public facilities, and uh, we will expect that to be uh, to be the case unless an individual uh, cannot maintain um, a social distance of, or if they're able to maintain a social distance of six feet, then it would not be required. But if you're you're not able to maintain that social distancing, a mask is required of you. And as the mayor said, council will uh, address that again next week. Um, on, on talking about a uh, um, an order that may apply citywide in other areas as well. So, um, but at, for for starting tomorrow, um, if you're on city-owned property um, and are not able to maintain that six-foot social distancing, you will need to have a mask. And we will um, be posting all of our um, city-owned properties and facilities with uh, a signage indicating uh, that requirement. Uh, with respect to some of our operations, I wanted to just touch on those. Uh, a little bit more. Um, we have uh, a number of updates to, to share uh, with regard to some of the things that uh, have come online or we're planning to, to come online in the very near future here. Um, I don't remember if we mentioned this the last time uh, we, we got together in a community briefing, but uh, our city offices uh, have reopened by appointment only Tuesday through Thursday. Um, our department contacts can be found on our website. Uh, so if you'd like to do business in person and not online, uh, you do have that opportunity uh, during the week uh, to set up an appointment and, and come in and do that. We do require masks uh, in our facilities, so uh, if you do not have one, we'll provide one for you. But uh, there is an opportunity uh, to um, uh, interact in person if you'd like. Um, let's see. Our uh, parks and playgrounds are, are open. Uh, Splash opened this last week um, for lap pool access only. And uh, if you want to utilize that facility, uh, you need to make a reservation online and, um, the, and, and reserve a specific time. And, and the best way we've come up with in, in the recreation side of things to, to help maintain uh, social distancing and managing the different types of uh, crowd sizes that we would have at our facilities uh, is to, to utilize a reservation type system. And so uh, we've done that at our uh, at our uh, Splash uh, Aquatic Center. And uh, if you'd like to, to utilize that, uh, feel free to do that. I think you can make a reservation for a 45 minute or an hour period of time and and um, uh, and utilize the lap pool during that time. I, in the first few days it was open, it was uh, fairly popular. I think we had uh, um, somewhere around uh, 80 folks the first day and, and 50 to 60 folks the second day who made reservations. So. Um, a pretty good turnout, and I would encourage you to use it. It gives you an opportunity to get into the water uh, on, on a hot day and, and have a little swim and still maintain uh, uh, social distance and public health um, requirements. We are going to use, utilize a similar approach as we're um, looking to reopen Golden Community Center, and I know that's an, a, of interest to many members of our community. Uh, we have committed to opening our community center um, no later than... Uh, in the gym um, and, 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 work, and workout facilities, I should say, no later than Monday, uh, July 13th. I, I think we might be able to accomplish it next week um, based on uh, um, and some information I received today uh, from, uh, from our director of public, uh, our director of parks and recreation. And uh, hopefully we can do that earlier than, than that date. But our, our goal is to um, uh, utilize uh, a reservation type system uh, to come into the community center in a similar fashion and, and utilize some of the the facilities there. Our swimming pool in the community center is is currently undergoing some replastering, so that will not open probably till later July. 
And again, um, based on our experience at Splash, we'll, we'll, we'll likely do a reservation type system uh, of some type there as well. So look for that uh, in the coming week or two. And I know Golden History Museum as well uh, will be uh, looking to um, reopen on a reservation type system. Our, our summer camps have been in place for a week or two now and have been going well. And um, there was one other I wanted to mention. And I lost it. Um, Oh, our RV park uh, is, is open and taking reservations again. Uh, I can't remember if I had mentioned that last time. So those are some status on uh, city services. If you have any questions about those, feel free to contact uh, our city manager's office uh, and, and we'll help guide you on any, any city services that you might need. Um, uh, or you can find it on guidinggolden.com as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a tab there for, for status of city services. Um, and. Um, uh, lastly, I'll just uh, uh, mention that um, the closure of, of bars that the mayor had mentioned on, under the uh, revised governor's order um, does not impact the uh, local breweries or distilleries. Um, and that was some information also shared uh, this morning from the, from the uh, county health department. Um, and they're taking a closer look at um, uh, uh, what, what kind of uh, whether there will be an impact in the future on, on those facilities as, as well. So um, I think that was it for, for, that, for updates from me. Uh, the only last thing I'll, I'll mention, it's not really a local update, but I know a lot of folks have heard uh, that the Pepsi Center testing site was kind of winding down for a few days. And um, uh, I received a notification today that they've received additional supplies and I think are going back to the seven day a week uh, a normal hour um, uh, testing facility. So if you are interested in that, that's a, 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 an avenue for you to, to receive a COVID-19 test. Uh, and Mayor, I think that's all I had in terms of updates um, specifically about city services. Great. I think the only other piece that I wanted to just remind folks is uh, this weekend uh, for the holiday weekend, Washington Avenue through downtown will be closed to traffic. Uh, we have been keeping it open uh, the prior weekends, but uh, for this weekend, it will be closed through downtown. So uh, keep that in mind if you're planning on coming down, getting some uh, takeout or enjoying uh, eating outside or, or visiting some of the stores in downtown Golden that uh, you will not be able to drive down Washington Avenue and, and use the parking uh, garages uh, to park or ride your bike and, and walk to uh, walk downtown for an even better experience. Um, that was it, I think, on the openings and closures, too. I think you got everything else that I was thinking of. So I think we can turn it over to um, questions. And there were some. Did you have? Yeah. Um, if you have a question, that? COVID-19 at cityofgolden.net, we can, we can take that or on Facebook Live. And we did have some that came in uh, in advance, uh, Mayor, and I know one, one was related to the creek access and the, the closure and whether that applies to all activities. And, and as uh, you mentioned, okay. it is um, restricting access uh, from city-owned property onto, onto the water. So it does apply to anybody looking to access the creek from, from City of Golden uh, property. And uh, again, as the mayor mentioned, we'll be bringing back some additional recommendations next week to revisit that uh, policy and what we can do potentially to encourage uh, social distancing while maintaining some access to the creek. But that'll be a discussion we'll have uh, later next week. So I hope that, that addresses that, that question. Um, there was another question around um, outdoor gatherings in public parks. What are the current guidelines and or state, county, city requirements, particularly as it deals with the size of the group? And uh, frankly, those requirements uh, have changed over the last week, so I had to look that up again because Jefferson County Public Health um, had submitted and received a variance from the state. Uh, and this. So we are using uh, the county guidelines around gatherings. Uh, the, there is a difference between gatherings indoors and outdoors, as you all um, already know. The requirement right now for gatherings uh, in outdoor settings allows for 125 people. 
So that is the current order or rules that we are under here in Golden, which are the Jefferson County um, Public Health Guidelines. Uh, other questions that have come in, uh, Carlin? Yes, we do have a few questions that have come in through Facebook. Um, the first one is, how can the city close Creek access if you haven't yet gotten the governor's approval? It's a great question. So the governor and the state uh, regulate the waterway, so in the water. Uh, local jurisdictions such as Golden can control public land that is the city's land. So what we are regulating at the moment is the, the land itself, which is the access into the creek. So that is where all um, ability to get down to the water is what is prohibited, um, not actually what's in the water itself. That is a state guideline. Uh, and that is why we cannot, as many people have suggested, just go back to um, only allowing certain uses in the creek. Uh, we do not have the authority to do that as a city, to say which uses are allowed or not allowed in the creek. Um, and so that's, that's the state's authority and what we will be asking the governor to allow us to regulate. And there are specific, I would just add to that, Mayor, there are specific uh, in that state statute that allows, um, some might ask, uh, how, how does the city limit it during high water times? And, and really there are some specific enumerated provisions in the state statute that allows us to um, restrict water uses, but only based on water conditions and creek conditions. Um, COVID-19 doesn't, isn't a water condition. Um, and so that's where the mayor is suggesting, you know, if we have uh, authority from the governor based on this public health emergency, um, that we can then distinguish between different uses. Okay, our next question is, has Mines agreed to close access to the creek from their property? I don't have um, an update on that. Some of the property along the creek is not City of Golden property. There's private as well as School of Mines. Uh, the hardened off access points into the creek are all on city property at this point, um, and that is, that is what the city is closing off. Um, it was brought up last night during the council meeting, a conversation with the School of Mines, um, but I'm not sure where that where that stands or, or if we'll get a chance to um, address that uh, or have an answer um, right away. Yeah, and I would only add, I, I, I think some of the, um, uh, the trail access that we have on, on the south side of the creek that might cross uh, School Mines property is pursuant to an easement which would allow us to control access to it. But um, uh, that is something we can certainly talk uh, d additionally to Mines about. Another question. I fish every day before work at Lions Park. Can I still fish Thursday and Friday morning? When did you say the order goes into the order, effect? The order goes into effect uh, t tomorrow uh, at 12.01 a.m., so after midnight. Um, so if you're, if you're fishing and, and at sunrise, uh, you would not be allowed to fish at Lions Park for this weekend. With the creek closed, how will you limit the crowds at Lions Park? It's a... The 4th of July weekend is always a, a busy weekend in Golden, uh, and of course the parks are popular places for people to spend a holiday. There's a couple of things besides the creek access closure that is different this holiday. Uh, primarily, there is no Lions Club event, uh, 4th of July event in Lions Park this year. Uh, so there will be no event um, doesn't mean people don't want to still picnic and, and gather in a park. Um, there will be controls in place that I think the city manager can speak to around uh, parking management and, and crowd management through that part of our city, which is really the whole western part from Washington down to the RV park. Um, the broadcasting of the closure of creek access uh, far and wide through uh, local media 
um, will hopefully get the word out to folks who maybe had been planning on coming to Golden just for creek use uh, for the weekend. So they hear that message uh, before they come into town and maybe decide uh, what they're, how they're going to spend their day um, and not include the creek uh, in those plans. And I don't know if you can speak more to the um, management of, of uh, traffic and, and crowds. Yeah, our, our goal is to, to direct folks to uh, that do come to Golden uh, who want to have a picnic or visit our local businesses or do other things other than uh, go into the creek uh, to be able to direct them to parking locations that are appropriate and, and so they can enjoy their, their time in Golden. Um, one of our goals is to keep folks out of uh, the 9th Street neighborhood that's adjacent to Clear Creek. Uh, we know that that um, often places a, a burden on that neighborhood that's disproportionate to the rest of the city uh, to, to bear that level of activity on the holiday weekend. So we're going to uh, have um, some street closures in that area and have folks that will be uh, directing people accordingly. Um, you know, one of the close, one of the things we, we often hear, uh, and the mayor probably gets more emails than anybody else on this topic, but, you know, the, the use of Clear Creek Trail, um, when we're trying to balance tubers and walkers and people who might be on bicycles or pushing a stroller, or it's very difficult to maintain uh, any type of social distancing in that type of environment, especially on a, a crowded holiday weekend. Um, and that is the importance of, of this, this order. And, you know, next week we hope to have more discussions about how we can try to balance all of those things in a way that will allow people to still come to the creek to fish uh, when it's not busy and to um, kayak and do other things that may not necessarily have the same level of concern. Um, but right now, you know, this is the tool we have. Uh, and, you know, one of our primary goals is to protect the, the public health and safety of our community. Uh, and so that's what we're doing. And I, I just want to add, the city is, you know, going to work hard on, on managing traffic and people coming into the area. Um, you know, the messaging is, is going out from the city. I, I know I've seen a lot of messaging from the governor around the 4th of July holiday about stay home, um, you know, gather with maybe another family in your backyard, outdoors. Uh, I think government of all level is trying to send the message of how to be safer this 4th of July, and this is not the time uh, to be having large gatherings and crowds. Uh, there's only so much, I think, that um, can be done. And at some point, that personal responsibility comes in to avoid crowds and maintain distancing and wear face coverings. And uh, really, I hope that the people in Golden recognize that and um, are planning to be safe uh, this 4th of July weekend and celebrate and have a great 4th of July uh, while still maintaining that distancing and avoiding large crowds uh, in, in public spaces. So we did have a question about traffic access into the 8th and 9th Street, but you've answered that. So the next question is, will masks be required on downtown sidewalks and roads? So the, the order that's, that goes in place tomorrow um, does not require masks on sidewalks and roads. And uh, the distinction is um, we can only, I can only issue an administrative order without council um, action um, that applies to city properties. Uh, streets and sidewalks are a public rights of way but not specifically city-owned properties. So this order doesn't apply to streets and sidewalks. Now, council may end up considering something like that as we get into discussion next week, um, but as it relates to this specific administrative order, it only applies to our city facilities uh, or parks or other city properties. And that was the next question. <laughs> uh, with um, We had a media question to explain the difference between an administrative order and a city council ordinance. Yeah, the, the, the administrative order is really specific to the code, uh, which enumerates certain um, authorities granted to the city manager. One of them is to control property owned by the city uh, or issue rules and regulations related to property owned by the city. Uh, and that's what this administrative order does relating to face, uh, for face covering requirements. Um, but 
uh, council can take whatever legislative action it decides to create any sorts of uh, rules uh, that apply to pri public and private properties throughout the city. And I think that'll be part of the discussion that happens next week. Yeah, so uh, we don't have a draft of an ordinance yet, but for our special meeting on the 8th, uh, just, as a re just as usual, uh, the agenda will be published in advance with, with a draft ordinance um, that we will be considering on first reading. So uh, it may change on first reading. We may have some edits and modifications, but it will be available to review, and then we will have the public um, meeting that folks can, can view um, on the 8th and then the full council meeting on the 9th. Uh, I will mention on face coverings that uh, all over town, all over downtown, all over the trails, um, in business windows, uh, there is lots of signage saying wear your mask. Um, that is the expectation in Golden, is that when you're out and you can't maintain distancing, that you wear a mask. Uh, that doesn't change. Um, we have been saying that all along, and we continue to say that. Um, that if you cannot maintain distancing uh, between another group, between other, uh, another individual, and you are going to be next to them for a period of time, uh, that you wear your face covering. And I think that is going to continue to be the message, uh, whatever gets adopted as actual legislation or, or law by council, um, that is the message that we've been sending and will continue to send. Those are all the questions we have at this time. And I'm hoping, uh, Carlin, I didn't miss any. I, I, <laughs> I didn't have them printed out how I normally do, so I was trying to, to scroll back through. But um, I think we addressed them all. More emails, and so I've <laughs> lost some. I <laughs> I'll just um, look really quickly. I, well, while we're waiting to see, and please do if you have additional questions. This is an ongoing conversation. Uh, it isn't. It hasn't ended. We will be talking more next week. Really, just the city manager and I be, wanted to give folks the opportunity to have this Q&A period since, since there was a lot of conversation at council last night, uh, some orders and, and press releases that went out today that likely sparked some questions. Uh, while we're waiting, I, I wanted to also address about the 4th of July weekend. It's staying safe on the public health guidelines, but please do not re forget the other guidelines that are in effect. And that is that no fireworks are allowed anywhere in the city. And that is any kind of fireworks. If you light it, um, it probably is illegal, is the mm -hmm. way I think of it. Um, so please do remember that. Uh, have a safe uh, Fourth of July celebration that does not include large gatherings or fireworks um, this weekend. Uh, there is still also a fire, stage one fire ban um, in effect. Um, so, so if you are going to enjoy an outdoor fire, make sure it is in a in a fire place in a approved um, outdoor fire pit. I guess is the term that I'm looking for. Uh, so just a little reminder on all of the ways to stay safe this 4th of July. Um, and the only thing I saw that you addressed, but maybe it's worth repeating, is uh, is that, that this is closed to everyone yeah. for every type of capacity. Uh, I'm just getting some questions about, can I kayak, can I do this, can I do that? And so if you just wanted to maybe restate that. Yeah, I think this is a probably the biggest point of confusion uh, because uh, during the winter, you know, Creek was pretty much closed to all users and, and then it was closed to all people in the water, but fishing was okay and then it was... Uh, fishing and kayaking was okay, but at all points you could still walk and put your feet in the water even if it was cold. Some people like to do that or their dogs like to do that. This is very different. Uh, you cannot touch the water. You cannot get to the water. You cannot access the water of any type of user, whether you're walking, uh, whether you're fishing, whether you want to get on the water in a kayak or tube or uh, the people that I don't understand who want to blow up an inflatable mattress and do that, which does not seem safe at all to me, but I see it, um, all of that is not allowed from city property. So so uh, we know the creek is a beautiful amenity. It's one of the things that we love and enjoy in Golden. But at this time, at least for this next week, um, we cannot use the creek. 
Um, and that's for all people. Uh, and I hope that's clear. Uh, I know it's confusing. I know it's challenging. A lot of folks would prefer us to just minimize the use of the creek somehow and, and restrict it to a certain number of users or certain types of uses, but we are not allowed to do that um, as a city at this time. And, and, I, and I would just say City Council had a lot of discussion about uh, this last night. Uh, if you're interested, you can go back and listen to it. But it's really, it's about the nuances of what we're allowed and not allowed based on the type of um, uh, regulations and, and legislation in, in place. Uh, this is the, the, the tool we have uh, to us available right now is unfortunately to restrict all the access. And I know council wasn't uh, entirely thrilled with that. I think they w would have preferred to take more of a the scalpel approach as to the sledgehammer approach, but this is the tool we have. And what we're gonna try to do uh, starting next week and as we go forward to see if we can come up with a plan and, and hopefully have some assistance from the governor's office to, to be able to be a little bit more nuanced about how we uh, restrict access to the creek. And, and really, it council taking this action wouldn't have been necessary if folks were abiding by uh, all of the public health guidelines. Um, you know, they've been out there for a while, uh, the six feet apart, wear your face covering. The city blanketed the creek corridor with signs, uh, both printed signs on, you know, along the trail uh, with the big electronic variable messaging board along 10th. And uh, as many of us observed who were in the creek corridor this weekend, uh, distancing was not being um, managed, uh, face coverings were not being seen, uh, groups were, were gathering in places. Uh, and so that is really uh, why council um, had this special meeting to address if that is what was happening last weekend, certainly for a holiday weekend, we can expect much more of that behavior unless we take some action now. And we did have another question come in. It's actually from NOLA with the Golden Chamber of Commerce wondering, will the Golden Farmers Market customers still be able to access the market and where should they park? Yes, yes, they will. Uh, 10th Street will still be open to access the, the farmer's market, and there should be plenty of parking along 10th Street or in our city hall lots uh, adjacent to the, to the market. So I don't, I don't anticipate that being an issue, um, but a great question. Yeah, and um, usually Saturday mornings are a little quieter, I know, but 4th of July, um, it may be a little busier. Uh, Saturday morning, uh, since 4th of July happens to fall on a Saturday this year. We have had several comments and conversations going on on Facebook, but since we're keeping this just to questions, I will just say that we'll make sure that you guys both see the comments that have come in uh, at a later time, and we'll just keep this to questions right now. Perfect. And I will say, you know, all of you who have been emailing to council comments, I think is the email address. It does come to all of us on council. If you would like to, you know, have your comments um, for the actual uh, discussion on the face covering ordinance next week, you know, please do send them. We will receive them. They will be part of the public record uh, when we have the vote on the 9th, um, if you submit them for that. And uh, we do appreciate hearing um, from everyone. And I know there's varying opinions out there, and it's always welcomed to understand uh, your opinion on a particular topic. That's it. All right. Well, I... I thank everybody for, for joining us. Um, you know, please do follow along uh, our meetings next week where we will have more discussions on both of these topics. Um, I also encourage you to continue to you know, look at the information that Jefferson County Public Health puts out around the actual public health data and information of what's going on in our city and in our county. And really, I just hope everybody um, has a wonderful 4th of July, that you stay safe, um, that you're able to still uh, celebrate, and um, that it's a very happy 4th for all. Agreed. Happy 4th to everybody. And I will make sure that uh, these administrative orders are, if they're not already, posted on our, our Guiding Golden page, just so if you want to read the text for yourself, you're able to do that. Um, but as the mayor said, stay safe, and I hope you enjoy a, a great holiday weekend.